Hi everyone. So a while back I uh, read a book on the Harappan civilization and it left me with goosebumps. There is so much talk about the Indian identity or the Bharatiya identity and it was when I was uh, reading this book I realized what a incredible ancient heritage uh, has come down to us. The book is on the Saraswati River. Naturally, that story is closely interlinked with the Harappan civilization. As with any human settlements, the clean water is source of life. In today's time, we hear often that the Ganga River is treated sacred simply because how important a water source it has been for the entire civilization. Maybe there were other reasons also, like great yogis spending time on the river banks. The fact that that water comes from the pristine Himalayas and so it would have been sanctified further. But one cannot deny the paramount role that the water source plays for any human settlement. Especially in ancient times when technology was a lot limited. And that's how in this story of the Saraswati river I found insights into this phenomenon that is the Indian identity. A while back I visited the archaeological remains of the port town of Lothal which is just a few kilometers away from Ahmedabad. It is said to be 4500 years old and has one of the oldest dockyards in the world. There is a bread making oven but that sounds really foreign. Let's call it a tandoor. So we can call it a dhaba with a tandoor in it. Then there were warehouses, there were pot related structures, bead making factories, there were well planned streets, drains, bathing areas showcasing how well thought out the city was and all of this is 4500 years earlier. So what happened was that initially when uh, they started excavating these sites a lot of the British uh, military folk were involved and uh, they naturally started terming all these structures as citadels and fortifications and uh, palaces and things like that. It was only after a lot of uh, further ex excavation that uh, many of them started saying that the sites are monotonous, it is boring. There were no great pyramids like the Egypt, ruins of some big battle. So that's where we start understanding the Indian identity. Over time, uh, they are suggesting that instead of a single ruling authority, like a centralized structure, for example, in Egypt, there were the pharaohs or in Rome, there was the Caesar, various Caesar uh, lines and those kind of rulers. They are saying that here in the Harappan civilization, there was a decentralized ruling, like different uh, groups of people held power in the society. Included, uh, merchants and uh, ritual folk like uh, pujaris and stuff and also people who held a lot of resources like land or cattle or stuff. So this was a civilization that was centered around trade and religion and not military power. And that was a huge difference compared to the other civilizations of the time small paragraph from this book let me know if you also get goosebumps when you are listening to this archaeologists who first dug at harappa or mohenjo-daro were used to glorious depictions of warfare and conquest found all over ancient sumer egypt china or greece to their great puzzlement nothing of the sort emerged from mohenjo-daro's dust no sign of military structure, not a single helmet or shield, not a trace of armed conflict at any point of time, no seal or jar depicting a battle, a captive or a victor. This apparently unnatural pattern repeated itself in sight after sight. Lest this picture of a prosperous, orderly, industrious and peaceful civilization appear too rosy, we must remember that it remains very incomplete. Less than 10% of the 1,114 known mature Harappan sites have been substantially excavated and the figure drops below 5% if we include all the phases. There are two big points here. The lack of military authority, rather trade and religion seem to have played an authoritative role. And secondly, there is no one centralized authority. It seems the authority was diversified and decentralized amongst various factions. It suggests a more community-based and system. For any Indian, especially traditional rural ones, they will start relating to these qualities right away. 
even to me despite my very urban origins these were like ancient chords resonating in my heart explorations have also shown that there was a lot of uh, diversity within the culture of different regions because this uh, civilization actually extended to quite a large uh, area as we have already mentioned that the ruling was not centralized and not one single authority so that allowed for a lot of diversity in for the various regions and that diversity is being seen in the explorations however at the same time there was a lot of uh, similarity flowing through like in terms of the weights you know at the time when they are trading that they would need to weigh things and so the like which uh, measurement you use like a kilogram and how is a kilogram defined all those things become extremely important for homogeneity and that homogeneity is being seen across this entire civilization the weights and uh, even uh, building you know the sizes of structures like building spaces and things like that were pretty uniform across the region and so that brings us to the third differentiating aspect of this civilization versus others of the same time and that is unity and diversity and i think this was uh, this was like insane for me because we've been reading about uni- unity and diversity since school times it's become almost like a common uh, slogan for india and imagine to find that quality find those values in this ancient civilization that took place uh, 4000 5000 years back and there is it could date so much further we have not even excavated so many things when i read all of these uh, puranas and all these uh, stories which are termed as mythological like ramayana mahabharata they are already describing these things um, so many years back but somehow in our mind we put it in a different compartment anyway because it has been termed as mythology mythology means a story which is not necessarily true so i know a lot of sources are saying that it's not mythology it's actually a history you know there may be different ways of seeing it but this is actually proof like we found something that is dating 5000 years and it is reflecting such core values that seem to have been retained even today in our society on the spiritual path we are always being told to choose a community uh, to choose kinship and harmony over any kind of uh, dissonance and conflict and um, imagine when uh, i am doing that for my spiritual goal i am actually aligning also with the entire ancient civilization that has flown on this land when india is choosing the non alignment policy uh, india politically india has made so many choices that actually fall so much in line with what harappan civilization was following and so every time we go out and we choose these qualities over the division we are actually affirming our ancient heritage and i'm glad that today the indian identity is so much in media conversation i would urge you to delve deeper into history into scriptures into traveling to different corners of the country because the main thing is not to simply hold an opinion which we can state in social gatherings but rather we need to truly experience what it is that we call india indian bharat bhartiya and from there we might be wiser to allow this indian legacy to continue through us